Hey Acers, and now I'm hoping that the lighting's even better than it was last time because I've decided I'm going to drop the tripod almost all the way down to its bottom and see how this lighting works out for me. So, welcome in to this week's Ace Role-Playing Games Club. And I'm your host, Mason Emerson. I founded and I'm running the currently only existing copy of the Ace Role-Playing Games Club, but hey, I hope to get more editions out there. More game shops and other places where people can go and roll the dice and have some fun telling a group story. For those of you who are new, the Ace Role Playing Games Club is a club for teenagers initially, and we often spin up grown-up tables alongside because we are here to provide you an opportunity to use role-playing games to make it through some of the hardest times of your life. Indeed, we are a... <coughs> A place where I can cough. Anyway, we are a club of people who support each other and make sure that we don't unalive ourselves. That's our goal. Because between the ages of 13 to 15, I was at a point where I almost deleted my save file. And I didn't harm myself in any way because I had role-playing games. Because I had friends who expected me to be there every single week. And I had friends who supported me when I was going through hard times. And I had the creative outlet of role-playing gaming. And those were friendships that we formed around that. So that's what Ace Role-Playing Games Club is. And that's what we're here for. Now, I'm going to kind of... The Adventure Generator series has been going on for a bit. I've got the shorts that are being piled into it. I've got the longer ones that I've already done. And I'm just going to keep going with those. However, I'm going to tell you in this video how you can run a better game because you chose the right hook to bring your players in. That's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to tell you that you can run a better game at your table, regardless of where it is. Because I like to think that everybody else out there who's watching my videos, that you guys are all game mastering and you're in your own areas and you're going to be coalescing an ace role-playing games club around you. So... Now that we're that out of the way, let's talk about the next adventure generator piece, and that is high society. I've been taking these longer videos and taking a few more minutes to actually work these through so that way I can help you guys understand, like I said, how you can run a better game. So let's talk about that. High society. How can a high society piece make it so your game is better? Well, if you're doing an adventure, you need some way of bringing the adventurers into the adventure. And sometimes they need to be brought in by somebody who's definitely higher in society than they are. That could be the king. So maybe you don't, maybe your characters haven't worked for the king before, but the king knows of your character's reputations and he's going to hire these characters, these adventurers, to come in and do a special job for him that nobody else can do. Maybe he's doing it for plausible deniability. Maybe he's doing it so he can get rid of you guys. It doesn't matter what the actual reason is. We get into the, the reasons later. What we are doing it for is this is the person who brings your characters and your players' characters into the story. And is often, high society is often the person who, the, the person or people who are wronged and want to hire your troubleshooters to be able to fix the problem. And yes, I did say troubleshooters, and yes, I am qualified to touch even white things. Red, orange, white, all of them. I'm qualified. Okay. So that's really how things go, and that's where things are going with this. You have maybe a politician, maybe a corporate bigwig, maybe you have a person who is secretly the high person inside that corporation. Whatever your reason is, you have been invited now to hobnob with the elite. And the nicest thing about hobnobbing with the elite is that you have the ability to, is you have the ability to get lots of good pay for the job you're about to do. This is what happens when you pause for about an hour and then your wife gets bored and braids your hair during Bluey. Uh, well, whatever. Um, so I will just 
go a little bit more, um, how does high society make your game better? Well, it, it can make things better for the, the player characters at least. Because when your player characters have the opportunity to have the opportunity to get a little more funds available to them to be able to do some of the other things that they need to do. That's a good idea. And like I said, this is the hook. This is the, this could be high society that doesn't want. Okay. You guys can't take me seriously like this. Can you? Okay. Now I'm back and I'm a little more serious. So what is the purpose of a hook anyway? A hook serves to be an emotional, and just that hook for your player characters to come into the world of the story. They need to join the story in some way. And it, and the classic one, of course, is everybody meets in a bar. And that's maybe where your high society person could meet them. However, what about the idea of, uh, like, okay, one of my favorite hooks is in Firefly. There's the episode where Mal and Kaylee go to a fancy soiree ball because they have to get a job from somebody that can only be approached at that ball. And they got to prove that they're worth it. And Kaylee, of course, gets this huge grand flowing gown. And it's... It's funny in, at moments because Mal's so awkward in this, Mal is just so awkward in this place and in this time. And, and Kaylee is just eating it up because it's in her mind, it's so glamorous and it's so amazing. And that's part of what you can get with the high society that you can't get really with any of the other ones is that you can get that glamour, that glints. And if you're doing like Deadlands Noir, like it's the setting, then that's where your, your non-poor people go. And that's where the non-poor people who will, will have the opportunity to actually pay the player characters to do jobs for them can be found. However, your non-poor people also might look down on the poor people. So, um, and of course, an opposite to high society would be your, your very poor people who scrape together, who scrape together enough money to be able to hire the heroes. And you get that in things like seven samurai slash magnificent seven, or even in the comedy film, three amigos. And they, and you get things like that, that, that make it so it's not high society. And, but being as they are low society, low society has its different perks and benefits to helping them out. And of course it gives your player characters a chance to be the true heroes and refuse the money or just go ahead and take the money anyway. It just depends on the, depends on the situation. And so when you want to go into high society, you're going to need to go in looking as snazzy and nice as possible. And maybe for your detectives, that might not be possible. So maybe there's some stress there that could happen. However, you can, from high society, gain lots of extra perks like getting access to other members of high society who need things done for them. So let's take a couple examples of this. I've mentioned a few along the way, but let's, let's take a couple examples of this. Um, what if your main characters or what if, what if your main characters, let's say, okay, let's kind of take a fantasy example. They work as they're working as just adventurers in a fantasy world. And they, they like to go and investigate the dungeons and they like to try and get the monies back and everything. But what if they get told about a dungeon that's been taken over by an evil wizard and they need the players characters to go in and clean the evil wizard out. Now this also could cause some fun problems as well, because what if the high society person like the Duke or whatever that hires them to go clean the wizard out of his castle 
What if he's a good man? What if he's a nice guy? And what if, since he's a nice guy, here come the here come our murder hobos, our robbing, looting, adventuring murder hobos, and they're going into this guy's castle where all of his family treasure and all of his and all of his heirlooms and everything are still at. Now they got to be careful to not destroy things, and maybe that's a that's a condition put on the heroes before they go in. What if they are going in and they're asked, please destroy as little as possible, or even told flat out, destroy as little as possible, or else we are going to damage you. Now here's a now there's a I haven't seen the documentary yet, but there is an example in real life. There's a band from the '70s called Blood, Sweat, and Tears. They sang. Um, spinning wheels and show must go on. And they, they had some really cool songs there in the early seventies, late sixties, early seventies. And they were essentially forced through blackmail and coercion by the Nixon administration to go put on a rock and roll concert behind the iron curtain. And that's pretty amazing to be like one of the first bands to go into Eastern Europe, into Russia, into all these security apparatchik places. And they're there kind of not as spies per se, but they're there to show what music and freedom really sound like. And the kids ate it up. However, because as far as everybody in the music industry understood here, these guys went behind the iron curtain and they did all sorts of concerts and everything. And they did it of their own free will and choice and it ruined their careers. So sometimes doing the, the right thing for somebody of high society isn't necessarily going to turn out well. And maybe, maybe it does. Maybe they do have to go back after the person from high society who put them there in the first place. There's just lots of, there's lots of reasons why high society could be both a good thing and a bad thing. And it of course leads also to what I mentioned or what I'm going to mention next week and talk about next week. And that's the referral. So, um, let's take maybe another high society one. And, and this also depends on what high society means to your, your world. So you could be a group of peasants who get hired by a samurai. You could be a group of landless free people who get to, who do adventures for a king. You could be a group of gunslingers getting hired by a rail baron to take care of people who've been killing other who've been killing innocent people. Things like that. There are all sorts of ways you can apply this, and I would really hope that you can make your games better because you are thinking of why would somebody who has the means to get something be hiring you? For that matter, are you their means of getting something? Think about that. Think about ways you can apply it. And remember, if no one's told you this today, I love you. I really do. You're amazing. You're wonderful. And you are loved by someone in this world. Stick around. It gets better. And I hope to see you at my table. Until next week, this is Mason Emerson of Ace Roleplaying Games Club, signing off.